Hi, my name is Laurel Pepworth and I've been a keynote speaker and conference, I guess, workshop facilitator for well over a decade now. My subject is social media and I often notice that the conferences that I'm at, little things that I really wish I could tell the event managers and the conference organizers that they could do to improve the promotion of their Facebook page, their Instagram account, their tweets, whatever, around the event that I'm attending. And I don't because it's a bit cheeky. So I thought it would be best if I did a little video on the top five things you could do with your Facebook page to make sure you get more organic uh, engagement. Organic engagement means not having to pay for ads. Things like um, getting more subscribers, getting more engagement, getting people loving your content, making sure it's in the news feed without having to boost posts all the time. So without further ado, let me start with number one. And I think number one is the big one. The issue for me with events is that it's very rare that you have the same audience for every event. Now I'm speaking here about event managers talking directly to their audiences on their page, not necessarily a speaker bureau who has one audience, which is conference organizers. I'm talking about conference organizers that run many, many conferences. Some have a specialist niche or a target audience. If you don't have a customer avatar for your page, one minute you're trying to target technology conference attendees and then the next month it's health conference attendees and then the one after that is education conferences and then the one after that is government conferences and then the one after that is mining and then the one after that is HR and the list is as long as there are industries. And here's the issue. If you put 10, 20 or 30 customer avatars, different customer types on one Facebook page, Facebook will pick one for you. So you really have to understand the difference between preferred audience versus core audience versus look-alike audience versus custom audience, all of the different audiences that Facebook uses. Once you've nailed that, you're good to go. Facebook will actually help you by making sure that this content goes to the mining people because it knows mining people like this content. I think the second thing is to treat your Facebook page as if it's a magazine for the industry. Make sure that there's maybe three pieces of content that are other people's content or found media. Great articles that the mining industry would like or if you've chosen HR that the HR industry would like. And then one promotional one. Gary V um, has a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And that means give, give, give great content and then right hook, have the ask, ask them to share the conference or promote the conference or tweet the conference or whatever it is. So really think about your Facebook page being a magazine. The third tip, leverage that cover photo. I know that people put up a cover photo in 2014 and it's now 2019. 2019, yes it is. Um, and then leave it there, but that's not a good idea. Think about a magazine cover. If your page is a magazine, you want to have a great cover photo. And I would suggest using canva.com if you don't know Photoshop, or if you do know Photoshop but still find it really unwieldy, like I do, then maybe use canva.com, start with the free version, create 12 cover photos, and just say that's the next year's worth, one a month, or however many events you have for that niche, make sure you change those cover photos. And the cover photos, please don't use empty venues. It should be what's in it for me. So when I look at a cover photo, I wanna see a famous person speaking and using them as a cover photo, or I wanna see people with glasses of wine in their hands, having a great time at a networking event, um, not just empty tables or just people sitting there passively listening. It's gotta feel like this would be a great event to go to. The next one is, how often should you post? And I'm gonna give you a tip that really works well for event managers more than anybody else. Facebook's algorithm has a data set, a 
thingy that they use. But Facebook has a data set called the Last Actor 50 or the Wedding Data Set. And it's part of the algorithm that says, if your client has interacted with you in their last 50 posts, then your, then your content, your next post will be seen in the same 24 hours. So if we take the wedding data set, if you interact with your friend's wedding on the Sunday morning at the breakfast, Facebook thinks you should see the rest of the wedding. So if people interact with your event the day before the actual event starts and you are posting more than one post a day, they will see all of those posts, as long as they interacted and it was interesting to them, for the rest of the event. This means that as much as possible, you need to be posting more than once a day because they have to interact with you a second time in the 24 hours for it to roll over to the next 24 hours. So really look at that scheduling tools. Um, I've got a list of great ones. And I would also suggest that you have a great content found media channel where you can just look at lots and lots of posts coming through and share relevant ones so that you can keep the popular posts rocking and rolling throughout the entire event and before the event to keep the promotions for the event going. Remember it's got to be three content for every promotion or three content for every advertorial. Number five is about distribution of your content and it's about leveraging two main features. One is influencers and one is hashtags. Maybe this should be five and six. No, no, we'll keep it at five. Distribution of content. Influencers tell their audiences to come to your conference. So what I would be looking at doing is making sure that I've done a deal or explained to any public speakers who have any kind of following, please remind your audience to come to the event. And that is either in their speaker contract or maybe you want to set them up as an affiliate um, so they get a clip of the sale or maybe you want to give them, a, if they don't care about that, give them a coupon, which is a give uh, something they can give their audience so that your influencers continue to bring people to the conferences. Not just obviously speakers, but anybody in the industry, maybe somebody who said they were busy, couldn't attend, but they might be happy to help promote the event. Build a relationship, don't dump PR on them. They're not journalists. <laughs> journalists receive PR information and then decide if they want to write that up in their magazine, industry magazine or something. With influencers, you wanna be a little bit more careful than that. And then the second one is use your hashtags wisely. For every hashtag that you've made up for your conference, you want to use three that the audience already uses. The audience are already tracking, maybe only a few people, but they would be influencers and sharing that content into their group. But for every hashtag you make up, use three that are already super popular. When you have a hashtag that you've made up, it's for you to check. It's not really for marketing, it's for you to confirm within your audience what's going on. If you see that a hashtag has 3,000 tweets on it or 25,000 Instagram posts and you think it's super relevant to that audience, use that hashtag because that way you're not just talking to people who already know the hashtag and that you're already reaching, which is called the owned audience. You want to get into the earned audience. You want to get through to communities of interest and effectively that's what a hashtag is. Yes, it's a search and other things, but it really is a community of interest. People who collect around Ozpol like Australian politics, people who collect around edutech like education and so on and so forth I'm sure you know your hashtags that's my five top tips for Facebook yes Facebook uses hashtags they are on Instagram after all they've understood now what hashtags are all about yes changing the image on your cover photo is so important and it has to be the correct size, which is why Canvas is so great. Facebook said that they demote pages that don't have a correct size um, photos and images within um, the Facebook page. 
I really think that looking at influencers is super important. Treating your Facebook page as a magazine, not just a buy now, special offer, coupon, click to buy this ticket, click to buy this ticket. Um, you can only really do that if you're a cheap as chips um, sort of daily deal site. It would be a struggle if you're looking at high net worth individuals paying a reasonable amount to attend a conference. And I also think that the number one tip, which is about sorting out your audience, making sure your core audience matches up with your preferred audience, matches up with your lookalike audience and that you've built custom audiences is so critical. The whole algorithm sits on top of that. I hope you found this useful. If you did, by all means subscribe. Make sure you ask for notifications because we know subscribes don't work. Um, but really pass this video on to someone that you know of in the industry that would find it useful because I think that that's a that's what I would like to have happen is for someone to say hey I saw this video super useful maybe you'll find it useful why don't you have a look at it so pass it on to someone who might need this thank you very much and I will see you in my next video So, what did we do? We did core audiences, be the magazine, cover photo.